Hello everybody. Uh, today I will start the new module that is non-conventional processing and this is basically we try to focus on the which is uh, not the conventional processes because we have already discussed about the conventional processes and here non-conventional processes is basically considered in the two perspective one is the manufacturing process which is not very common and second is the type of materials for example the ceramics. So processing of ceramics is actually not very common or not very uh, large number of manufacturing processes available for the uh, ceramic uh, component. So in that sense we will try to look into that very specific manufacturing process of course there are so many manufacturing technologies which is we can consider this it is a non-conventional processes but here very limited number of manufacturing processes I have considered and which is maybe aligned to this uh, particular uh, code structure. So first we will try to look injection molding and extrusion processes based on dispersion and the additive processes. Actually these two processes injection molding and extrusion process is basically well known but we will try to discuss from the perspective of uh, uh, this uh, non-metallic material specifically for the ceramic component uh, ceramic materials or maybe I can say the what I can handle the ceramic powders because most of the ceramic uh, components is basically process the, the initial state from the powder formation. So we will try to look ceramic material what we can handle and the uh, other is the polymeric material. So from that two different non-metallic materials we will try to discuss about the injection molding and extrusion process. Apart from this thing this particular module will cover the colloidal uh, processing and casting so related to that and then coating and tape casting processes and finally we will try to look in the polymer and ceramic coatings. So these are the basic elements or uh, maybe I can say that uh, this subtopic will I will try to cover uh, this uh, particular uh, module which is the non-conventional processing. Now non-conventional processing before looking into the different uh, manufacturing uh, te uh, technologies or processing technologies here we will try to look into what are the typical characteristics of the different uh, types of the uh, materials and uh, this basically this materials is basically classified into three different families one is the ceramics polymers and metals so let's see uh, how their uh, characteristic behavior are different with respect to each other and because it is very important to choose or to understand the manufacturing process based on this uh, particular properties of the material so if we look into the ceramics also and that ceramics material that also include the glass and the of course uh, it's a glass ceramics also. So uh, this type of material is having very uh, the, the properties are you say basically we say it's a non-metallic it's a inorganic solids which is hardened by the thermal treatment this is the typical characteristics of the ceramic material of course it is having very high resistance to corrosion chemicals and acts as a high refractoriness also it is having very high refractoriness also. But major limitation is that inherently it is very brittle the ceramic metal is very brittle typically from, from powders actually it is very difficult to process the ceramic starting from the this form of the billet uh, like what we follow in case of the metallic component but the, for the ceramic the we start from the uh, powders actually and from the powders we try to take the different shape or try to make the different component following the different manufacturing processes. So that is why we start from the powder so therefore this particular manufacturing process of the ceramic is do not follow any kind of the deformation techniques for example in metal forming operation we try to apply the de deformation and then we will take the shape so it is a kind of manufacturing process uh, through which we can make the product but for it is not true in case of the uh, uh, ceramic material because it cannot perform the any deformation mechanism to manufacturing uh, to manufacture the components for the ceramics. But there is a definitely powder processing we have already discussed the powder processing there are so many challenges the main challenges for the powder processing is the uh, agglomeration that means the clustering of the uh, powder and uh, that is the main difficulties associated with the that uh, processing of the powder. Uh, even it is true in case of the ceramic materials also. Polymers, polymers actually includes the these plastics as well as the elastomers also we bring the same family same group polymers but polymers is the organic solids uh, formed from the monomers so from the monomer we can form the different uh, organic polymers 
usual typical properties is very light floppy kind of structure and properties actually very much dependent on the temperature. So, very small change of the temperature maybe there might be the drastic change in the properties in polymers usually occurs and easy to save by melting and uh, molding. Uh, this is the main mechanism of the manufacturing process for the polymer. So, just melting as well as the, uh, the molding of the, the polymeric material. Similarly, for metals we know the very stiff, tough, very soft also uh, the different types of the material are soft, relatively soft and can easily deform. So, therefore, in this case this is the typical characteristic, but it can be strengthened with the application of the alloying. So, we know that with respect to the pure metal the alloy, the strength of the alloy is much more. So, we say we can say the strengthening mechanism uh, are different in this case. So, in this case the strengthen through mechanism alloying center with the work hardening or straining and strengths can be increased or maybe uh, optimized using the heat treatment process in case of the metals. But ductility allows formation by deformation process because metals is having certain amount of the ductility. So, that actually allow to apply any manufacturing process which is related to the deformation, mechanical deformation of the component or of the raw material. So, here you can see the overall you can see that of course, we see the deformation procedure the which manufacturing process is allowed to deformation in that case metallic materials can be applicable. But in case of the ceramic we, we do not use the process which allow the deformation, but because ceramic processing starts with the uh, from the in the raw metal in the form of a powder. So, here is the basic differences in the properties or if you look into the even for the this is the properties what even there is a some strain properties or uh, some other thermophysical properties are different for ceramics polymers and metal and based on that we can choose the different manufacturing processes. Now, first start with the ceramic processing because we understand that uh, most of the non-conventional manufacturing processes is basically associated with the with the uh, ceramic components. So, that is why we start with the uh, ceramic processing. So, ceramics are mainly produced by the powder processing techniques. So, definitely we to what we can do the powder processing technique the similar manufacturing process technique is applicable for the ceramics, but sometimes we need the additives uh, for the ceramic processing it is required to binding the ceramic particles uh, by use some kind of the additive. So, that is the one main features associated with the uh, ceramic process that is the additives. So, after raw material selection we can select the raw materials and vinification powder uh, must be consolidated into the into the uh, shape bodies and because we try to take one particular shape from the powder. And after that we can follow the other other procedure maybe we can perform the sintering operation or other kind of the operation can be performed uh, to uh, to manufacture the uh, ceramic component from the ceramics. But this forming methods can be classified when you take that particular shape and then we take the desired shape the ceramic this forming can be the one particular shape can be or I can say the form, forming can be done using the three different ways. One is the dry processing method. So, it is understood the dry processing method means if the liquid content is less than 7 percent. If it is plastic forming the mechanism the liquid content is even more than that it around 50 to 20 percent. If colloidal shaping methods that is called the also called the slip forming in that case the liquid content is actually greater than 50 percent. So, depending upon the liquid content in the ceramics uh, the ceramic powders when you try to bind the ceramic powder in the different mechanism or different manufacturing processes. So, based on the water content we can say these are the three basic categories of the, the forming uh, the to the shape of the ceramic component. So, dry processing method in that case the either we can power the ax axial pressing or we can perform the isostatic pressing. Axial pressing is the compaction of the powders in a die with the application of the pressure, but isostatic pressing in this case is the more uniform pressure is applied uh, in the all direction such that that there is no not much variation of the this component density or other properties. So, that is how you will try to follow the isostatic pressing. Then plastic forming, plastic forming means in this case we used for the this particular technique is used for the bricks, used, used for the roof tiles of course, and used for the filters, the ceramic filters and uh, catalyst the, see these are the particular components we can manufacture using the plastic forming operation. So, it is like that we can 
perform the extrusion, but this extrusion completely dry uh, ceramic particles difficult not possible to extrude it. But extrusion is happen with the water content is around or liquid content not water exactly it is a liquid content around 15 to uh, 20 percent liquid content is there then we can perform the extrusion process. And even it is possible to the perform the injection molding operation. So, we know the techniques for the injection molding we have already discussed. But here also it is applicable the in injection molding, but in that case the liquid content can be 30 to uh, 40 percent uh, in this particular uh, this uh, uh, this mixture the ceramic particles the uh, in, in this case. So, both extrusion injection molding can be applicable, but not exactly the dry powder. So, it is along with the some additives and such that the liquid content using this uh, this this composition can be uh, 15 to 20 percent then we can perform the extrusion operation if it is around 30 to 40 percent then we can perform the injection molding operation for the ceramic powder. Now, colloidal shaping methods that is called the slip forming also in this case liquid content is very very high more than 50 percent. So, in this process is basically uh, this based on this uh, category of the manufacturing or approach. So, it consists of the one is the slip casting process we can follow or suspension techniques also. Slip casting process source of the methods like pressure casting, centrifugal casting can be applicable to perform the, uh, the ceramic component the to manufacture the ceramic component that is the slip casting process we will discuss in detail about the slip casting. Next is the suspension technique. So, based on the consolidation mechanism the such as evaporation can be performed, uh, full occlusion can be. Uh, mm, can be performed polymerization, uh, gelation can be uh, this kind of the techniques can be performed uh, which is under the suspension techniques and uh, this is basically what uh, we can perform the this it, this different procedures it uh, ensure the consolidation mechanism they are different in that way the how what way the consolidation mechanism is happening. So, these are the typical processes now here we can see that. Uh, a flow chart to understand the, the processing of the ceramics. One is the first raw materials starting from the raw materials benefication, then we take the different shaping but raw materials can be uh, natural synthetic materials and benefication means basically milling or mixing, uh, separation, filtration, washing and granulation. So, all these steps are involved in the benefication. So, following this particular steps benefication can be done and then we take the yes. shaping operation. Shaping can be done using the pressing, using the plastic molding, using the slip forming. These are the three different approach the shaping of the component can be done. Now, of course, the humidity that means we lose more humidity for the slip forming process, the least humidity for the uh, pressing process that we have already discussed. Now, once it is done uh, in this cases then we perform the drying operation. So, once the take the shape and then we perform the drying operation after drying operation that just to remove the liquid content uh, this thing. Then we perform the sintering process and sintering process after sintering process it takes the final shape. So, once taking the final shape then we take the some finishing operation some machining operation can also be uh, can also be performed in this case or even after drying also the machining operation can also be performed. So, these are the basic steps for the processing of the, the ceramic. So, usually starting from the ceramic powders. Now, we already mentioned that one of the important major important manufacturing processes associated with ceramics is the additives what we can use the additives in the ceramic uh, processing. So, additives uh, we use the because in this case the ceramic processing involves the multiple steps we see already there are so many steps are involved the multiple step to reach the from raw material to the uh, final shape of the component. But in this case this processing aids known as the additives. So, that actually either we can use the organic or inorganic additives which is basically aid or maybe facial aid uh, to perform the different steps of the uh, ceramic manufacturing processes. So, in this case this additives is basically to control the characteristic of the powders at the different stages. So, powder the to modify or to control the powder uh, characteristic at the different stage of the uh, processing of the ceramic component we use the additives. So, here we take the we can check the what are the type of the additives. So, additives are deflow glands that means in this cases the thinning agent used to reduce the viscosity uh, that can be uh, in case of the uh, this use for the inorganic uh, additives or organic additives to different column. So, in this case the inorganic additives is basically we use the uh, potential determining um, ions, electro, electrolytes, 
salts and uh, all this can uh, can act as a the thinning agent to reduce the viscosity that uh, uh, such that you know the reduce the viscosity means if you try to enhance the flow of the uh, uh, flow of the this slurry kind of things uh, over the the surface now organic substance uh, in this cases the organic also organic they use the different surfactants so it can be different types of the surface tanks the uh, steric stabilizer usually for polymers and elastomeric stabilizers can also be used so all can be the this type of the different types of the um, this uh, organic substances can be utilized to enhance the viscosity of the, the of the of the component the the ceramic powders now this is the one type of the additive if there is a binders type of the additive this colloidal silica can be utilized in this case and in uh, which is known as the in organic but organic components is the cellulose derivatives so different cellulose derivatives can be utilized uh, as a uh, organic binder uh, to perform the uh, act as additives for the ceramic particles even for the uh, binders can be clays binder can be silicates binder can be also cements so in this cases here also uh, vinyl alcohol uh, polyvinyl butyl can be used so these are the different uh, different uh, kind of the organic um, binders can be utilized in case of the processing of the ceramic powders apart from this thing if you the type of that is with the plasticizer in this case the clays bentonites can also be used and glycols uh, can also be used in case which is act as organic material here the lubricant can also be utilized uh, which is one type of the additives used in the ceramic processing that colloidal talc uh, uh, colloidal graphite can be utilized and even for the organic it's a fatty acids oil there can also be act as an uh, this uh, plasticizer or uh, sorry this fatty acid this would work as a lubricants in, in this cases to perform the uh, act as additives for the ceramic components even Cogaluents uh, can be used in this case, uh, gel formers can, can also be used, the different type of this thing. Um, Cogaluent can be the chemical that is used to remove the suspended solid from the, the, the solution. From the solution, it can be removed the, uh, the solid here, suspended solid. So, these are the different uh, inorganic component, um, the um, uh, aluminum chloride, calcium carbonate, this can be used uh, in case as an inorganic uh, this thing uh, for the uh, act as a type of the additives even for the organic we can use the urea can be used the organic starch can be used also uh, these are the different types of the um, the organics uh, substance is used uh, to perform as an additive for the uh, for the binding of the ice and the binding of the, the the ceramic particles now we start with the dry pressing so this is the techniques in detail dry pressing is the there are three stages of the dry pressing one is the filling of the dye then follow the compaction and shaping the take the shape and then finally once it is done we perform the ejection uh, from these steps so pressing what can be classified as a single action and pressing it can be double action pressing it can be the floating dye also and pressing is basically associated with the movement of the dye and which is punch and die is basically synchronized in the uh, dry pressing operations. Now here the punch stops are set at a particular pressure which can be hydraulically controlled and but at a particular displacement use the mechanical control also. So either you can use the hydraulic controller, we can use the mechanical control because mechanical control we simply measure the distance or in case of the hydraulic control we can use the values of the critical pressure in, in this case. Sometimes we use the vibratic punches are also used in pressing because some uh, uh, in pressing because some coarse granular products such as the grinding wheel in this particular case when the coarse granular product we want to uh, manufacture in that cases vibrating punches can also be used. So here you can see the fill the deposition die and punch com combination and it is a pressing motion the different steps are there for the fill position and then die close off you can see the die close off and then applying application of the pre press in this case pre press and the in this case after that press position we reach the press position and finally once it is done then ejection 
uh, position that means the ejection of the components is done. So, this two step pressing motion and the ejection of the component. Now, you can see the dry press mode here if you the type whether we say already single action uh, double action and, and floating die and die is the position of the die is a fixed fixed in this case is the floating die it moves top punch is in motion in the different cases bottom punch fixed motion fixed. So, different the way we can we can take the different die press modes to perform the this die pressing of the uh, ceramic components. Even in this case the clearance between the die and punch can be uh, using this thing around 10 to 25 micrometer when using the micro size powders and it can go up to 100 micrometer for the granular particles. So, that means in the particle size little bigger then we can go up to the clearing between the die and punch can be go up to 100 uh, micrometer. In this case sometimes the this uh, die wall sometimes become tapered and because this when uh, if it is a tapered then ejection will be much more easier in this particular case. And pressing rate, so what is the rate what that means if the pressing is done and that is pressing rate is basically it's it's a varies from the fraction of the second to the small parts to the several minutes for the large part. So, it can be depending upon the size of the component the pressing rate can vary from second of the order of second to the several minutes also in dry pressing operation. Now, there is extrusion process and uh, to handling the the ceramics component in this case we know that extrusion process is basically shaping of the cohesive plastic material by forcing it through the orifice or rigid die. But in this case we are not actually the extrusion process is basically we are trying to discuss for the polymeric material not uh, for the ceramic components here. So, plastic consistency is produced using the clay binder we can see that and the polymeric organic binder or a mixture of the uh, two type uh, we can use the different types of the polymers can be used and we mix it up and sometimes we can use the clay binder also. In this case the extrusion is very productive forming technique that can be used for the mass production and for a even for the large to the that we know that the extrusion is the more effective production process. So, because mass production is possible from this uh, extrusion. So, example of the component produced by the extrusion is the brick and tiles refractories such as the thermocouple protection tube, furnace tube, silicon carbide heat exchanger tube and the porcelain electrical insulators or all this kind of the type of the uh, ceramic components can be manufactured using this uh, extrusion process. But in this case we always try to use the this polymeric organic binder uh, can be utilized in, in this particular case. So, sometimes the depending upon the temperature the warm extrusion process is used when the uh, we need for the graphite electrodes and forming the composites in these two cases we do not follow the extrusion process at exactly the room temperature rather warm uh, extrusion is actually used in this particular process. Now, extruded can be reshaped also in the second extrusion operation and which by the plastic pressing operation or plastic pressing and the molding operation because we are trying to discuss here just I am coming back to this the a dry pressing methods we discuss uh, in this cases now we try to look in the plastic forming uh, process. So, plastic forming is basically extrusion and injection molding these two processes we will try to discuss here. Now, equipment and the material variable in the extrusion process. So, extrusion process I think we have already discussed extrusion process, but here we try to look into the from the perspective of the, the ceramics what a extrusion process can be performed here. So, here equipment use in this case the industrial uh, Pag mill this is the extrusion specifically the extrusion uh, extrusion machine for the to perform the, the component uh, for the ceramic material. So, here feed material prepared by directly mixing a binder we can see the feed material uh, uh, prepared here the in this case the directly uh, mixing the binder along with the binder and the ceramic particles here the binding and powders powders that which will form the powders of the ceramic materials and then liquid is added. So, already seen that some amount of the liquid is added also to obtain to, to bring the homogeneity of the material. So, liquid is added with the with the binder along with the ceramic powders together. Then further dispersion and the mixing actually occurs in a pack mill machine. So, here 
when it is rotated, if you see this is the in this particular chamber when you supply uh, this mixture, the further mixing also happens in this particular chamber. So, that is why it is already mentioned that further dispersion and the mixing may occur in the pug mill, which is an auger uh, with broken flights mixes the feed material. So, here you can see that here you can, you can it is simply by rotating we mix the this uh, this materials uh, once again. So, and once it is done mixer is done then we force to enter in the vacuum chamber. So, and force it through the uh, threaded into the vacuum chamber we, it enters after mixing it enters to the vacuum chamber and in the threaded material that is small in cross section is more uniformly uh, D air without surface drying. So, basically once it is uh, entered here and uh, D airing agar here you can see the D airing agar is there. So, basically in this case and then after the D airing it entered into the vacuum chamber. So, sometimes the piston or ram single agar or twin screw agar is also used to consolidate the material. So, it can be single or double also twin screw agar can be used and it is extruded through the die. We see uh, here this is vacuum chamber from here this uh, one of the D agar, uh, D earring agar and then here you can see that orifices for the shredding the shredding clay col column in this particular case and then after that once this is the vacuum it is used the and put the another extruder agar here and then it passes through the extrusion die and take the particular uh, shape uh, of the ceramic component. So, section extruder is used we see which is depending upon the cross section of the product we are looking for and uh, can be used as the feed material and the second sip sometimes the second shipping operation can also be utilized in this case. We see that single or the different variants of the extrusion process uh, to handle the ceramic uh, component. So, equipment material variable in the extrusion process the stages first we look into that stages of the uh, steps are that for first is the material feeding then consolidation of the flow of the feed material into the barrel and then flow through tapered die or orifice and the flow through the die land of the constant cross section. So, this is the flow through tapered die or orifice this is the does not reach the final component final product because it is again pi through the constant cross section of the die land. So, once it is done then we perform the, the final uh, shape of the component and one after that it get the ejection. So, here types of the extrusion can be piston uh, types of the extrusion can be agar extruders we are already seen. So, here you can see the piston and the agar extruder is that the piston is the simply you can use the ram press it and passes through the, the through the die also and then after when it is uh, come out from the die this extruded the uh, ejected component can be used uh, can, can be the final outcome from this this uh, ram type of the extruder piston type ram piston type of the extrusion. So, here now there is another type here we can use the the uh, agar a u uh, this this particular way to perform the extrusion operation. So, in this case we create the rotation of this thing and that actually create the pressure and that pressure basically uh, this converging here and that this material is basically uh, pressed to the, passes through the die cavity and the through the die and then we get the the ejected component at the end. So, you can see the, the different way we can create the pressure through, through the extrusion process. I one cases we can use the simply ram system the using the ram and or piston we just create the pressure when other cases we can use the system the agar system that is we try to rotate it and screwing the material and they make create the, the pressure also. Now, piston extruder here is the friction extruder uh, feed material is basically this uh, D air billet from the pug mill we already D air fillet in the enters to the pug mill and the may be segmented. So, it can be the there may be the segmented the material, but in this cases the to perform this operation the very high pressure can be generated uh, in this process and other thing is that there may not be the very continuous material deformation may not happen here because it becomes the intermittent operation is usually associated with the piston based extruder process. So, here low capacity batch process can be performed the in, in this particular case and uh, other cases the required incremental loading also. So, here the gradually you have to increment the uh, loading. So, that is the main but main disadvantage is that this is the the intermittent process the process is not continuous it is a intermittent process to produce the uh, component. But if you look into the 
agar extruder in this case we see very clearly the fitting the uh, this rotating this thing and through rotation it can uh, it can create the pressure and that passes through the die so here pressure zone during the agar feeding we can see that and in this second figure is the twin screw extruder so here the two twin screw extruder having certain advantage in this case they try to look into the uh, the different characteristics of the agar extruder so feed is conveyed and densified when compacted when this is compacted the feed is basically create to the densification of the component the metal becomes continuous in the metric zone so there is a continuous deformation happens the for feeding using the single agar the material must be slip on the wall of the barrel so when you use the single agar so material always try to slip on the barrel wall but when you use the large or tapered agars may be used to produce the high extrusion pressure so basically if you want to create the high extrusion pressure that it can be create the taper shape of the agar can be utilized so that can create the much pressure differences because of the tapered cross section large helix angle sometimes increases the delivery rate but at the same time large helix angle is too large then compressive thrust of the metal will be less that is the one point so we have to find out the what can be the helix angle for this the screw extruder screw of the extruder helix angle usually 20 to 25 trunk is a very common commonly used but ratio of the agar diameter to the product diameter increases as the yield strength of the metal is increases so if the yield strength of the metal is very high in that case the diameter this uh, the ratio of the agar diameter the product diameter is basically the increases because once the yield strength is very high means once it is pressure is released uh, through the when the this materials passes through the die and then suddenly pressure is released so uh, in that cases it will go through the the some elastic recovery and the elastic recovery part will be much more when the yield strength is very high so that's why this diameter ratio is basically agar diameter product diameter is increases much more differences it will be much more if the yield strength of the metal is also high uh, apart from this high pressure may be developed using the twin screw extruder which provide the positive material displacement so this twin screw extruder it create much more higher pressure as compared to the single extruder so that's why it is having some advantage to create the pressure the the much pressure for the twin screw extruder now once you look into this process now there are so many defects associated with the which is known as the extrusion defects and what we can control all these defects we'll try to look into that so extrusion defects is that one is the insufficient strength and stiffness so here strength of the ejected extruder that can be high enough to resist the deformation during the handling also so some appropriate amount of the strength is also required uh, of the ejected extruder component but in this case the cohesive strength is basically increased by increasing the using the high molecular weight binder so that sometimes the it depends on the when the high molecular binder weight uh, for the we can utilize in that cases the cohesive strength of the particles will increase and colloidal particles uh, binder and the colloidal particles we can do reducing the liquid content and using in the binder that gels during the uh, extrusion so in this case the strength uh, cohesive strength can also be using uh, enhanced using the colloidal particles and of course in this cases by reducing the liquid content they will try to increase the the this uh, cohesive strength also and of course using a binder that uh, that gels that uh, uh, this uh, it basically the binders as a gels during the extrusion process all these cases the cohesive strength can also be enhanced cracks and lamination so cracks and lamination is basically we know the differential shrinkage is associated uh, in this particular most of the cases if the shrinkage is different then that will try to create the cracks and the it can be cracks and the lamination in the extruded product so that will create some kind of the kind the structure kind of the lamination structure can be created in, in this cases when there is a dip, the different drying shrinkages associated with the with the component so the shape of the crack depends on the relative shrinkage uh, as well as the and the inhomogeneity is associated with the extruded component so the common origin of the foot crack is the small the foot crack is the small hard inclusion of the low drying shrinkage so if there is a presence of the very hard inclusions is there in this in this component uh, during this 
um, processing and the small hard inclusions of the low drying sinkage probably introduce some kind of the uh, food crack. So here we can see the uh, sorry not food crack we can see the crow food crack. So it looks like this crow these are the crow food crack. So this type of the crack is actually generated when there is a in this there is a very hard uh, inclusion very hard inclusion is there. The greater sinkage of the surrounding materials creates the circumferential the tensile test and the radial fracture cracks can also be created that actually happens if the large amount of the sinkage of the surrounding materials they create this kind of the this large circumferential tensile stress and the radial fracture is basically associated with that. Now surface craters and blisters can also be created in this cases the air in the body may dissolve in water at pressure below 1 mega Pascal. So that can dissolve uh, this uh, may dissolve in basically in water but or decompressions during the ejection this dissolved air can migrate through the small channel which is basically when try to migrate through the small channels at the decompression uh, stage. So that will create a very large pore and on create a blister surface defect. So on the over the surface there looks like a uh, blister defects is associated with this thing presence of the air. So therefore evacuation of the air from the feed material is basically is the common practice uh, uh, this uh, in this particular process that will try to create some kind of the surface crack. So extruder must be well sealed to prevent il air infiltration under the vacuum. So therefore when you are creating the vacuum so we have to be careful just the uh, infiltration of the air. Uh, before passing to the vacuum chamber of the of this uh, raw material or, or maybe the ceramic component. Now there is another type of the defect that is a periodic surface lamination can also happen. So it basically causes the slip and the stick wall friction. We know the uh, slip as well as the stick wall friction. We know that wall friction can be represented in the, the sliding friction and the sticking friction also. So in this case combining of the slip occurs but at the, at the same time there is a the sticking friction occurs at the wall and and the high elastic spring back. These are the responsible for this kind of the this laminated structure uh, associated with this the ceramic processing. So characteristic is basically the periodic surface cracks easily occurs which is perpendicular to the, the flow direction we can offer because in this cases one is the directly slip another is try to stick another layer. So it is a kind of the uh, periodic lamination and the uh, apart uh, the part uh, this periodic surface cracks forms which is the perpendicular to the flow of the uh, flow direction. What are the contributing factors? The poor dye lubrication because that is the responsible for this kind of the defects. High extrusion pressure if the pressure is too much then that will create this kind of the defects. Solution is that we can improve the surface lubrications, we can increase the liquid content we can increase the extrusion velocity also all are ha all helps actually to reduce the, the periodic surface lamination type of the defect in this the during the processing of the ceramic materials. There is another type of the defect that is called the curling of the extrusion. Uh, the, the improper positioning uh, and the friction imbalance is basically try to create this kind of the this, uh, this curling effect the extruded component. So normal conditions for the die is basically center on the agar systems for the symmetrical pressure distribution. So die is put, put in such way that it will try to face the symmetrical pressure distribution. Mm, otherwise there might be the problem of the this curling effect. So solution is the ensure die is not positioned too close to the termination of the agar. So it is not too close termination of the agar and the design of the die also to uh, provide the compensating die wall friction. So it will die should be designed in such a it will try to compensate the die wall friction during the extrusion of the hollow items. So therefore basically balance friction produced by the bridges and the core rods to prevent the curling. So somehow we have to make the balance between the, uh, the friction and the bridges will pr produce and uh, that will this actually uh, try to make the balance such that curling effect will not be there in this component. Lamination from the unjoined flow stream. So unjoined flow stream the lamination might also happen in this cases when material leaving an agar is separated is basically separated at the half 
So, that actually create this kind of the defect. So, flow in front of the half and the radial twist uh, downstreaming the creates a characteristic F S shape interface or this S shape interface may create some kind of the internal cracking during the drying operation. So, that can be a, a problem associated with this uh, ceramic processing technique. So, there in this case the weak interface may be produced between the flow lines where the pressure is uh, insufficient for the bonding. So, the weak interface is the not uh, a strong interface might not form uh, in this case uh, at the joint of the flow lines where insufficient bonding the, where the, the pressure is basically responsible the pressure is insufficient to perform the bonding operation at this junction uh, point. Now there is another type of defect that is called the poor skin defects in this cases it actually results from the insufficiently developed slippage film on the body. So, the film very thin film usually occurs on this uh, this process and this during the, the extrusion process, but if there is insufficiently slippage occurs on the film then it will not it, that will that will try to create the very poor skin. Characteristic is the smell zone with a rougher uh, surface texture. So, that actually indicates the this poor skin uh, can form this kind of the defects can form. Solution we can use the dispersed colloidal particles more completely if the dispersed in the colloidal particles in the more completely increase the content of the fines, the liquid and the lubricant uh, all we can increase all these things and the polish the surface of the dye land to improve the skin quality of the extruder. So, basically very polished surface of the dye land. So, improvement of the liquid content and uh, in, increase the uh, colloidal particles try to disperse in the more uh, complete and the, it's completely then that will help uh, to produce the very very uh, good quality skin of the extruded component. Next is the gradients in the extrude stiffness. So, we need the extrude stiffness is not uniform throughout the length or throughout the any direction. In this case the liquid migration down the column during the extrusion which is known as the bleeding process. It actually causes the material that is lost out to be the uh, stiffer. In this cases uh, they actually this material which is lost out and which is basically supposed to help the bring the stiffness of the extruded component. So, bleeding can be reduced by decreasing the permeability of the body. So, permeability of the body in this case uh, the bleeding can be reduced by the decrease. So, too much of permeability in the structure that will try to help the uh, bleeding process. So, so if, if you other way if you reduce the permeability of the body and that will try to stop decreasing the bleeding operations. So, that will help to bring the uniform the uh, stiff, stiffness throughout the structure. In this case the feed material feeding material should be uniform compositions to keep prevent the stiffness gradient. So, uniform if it is a non-uniform composition that will automatically create some kind of the uh, stiffness gradient in the in the component. So, that is why the feed material should be uniform composition. This will helps to to avoid the the gradient in the this uh, in the extruded components. Tearing during cutting. So, in this case the completely produced by the frictional drag this responsible for this kind of the defect. So, in this case use a lubricated cutting tool with a small friction area that actually try to reduce the tearing effect. So, lubricated cutting tool we can use, but friction area can be minimized which it can be confined in a very small area that will try to reduce the tearing effect. So, ensure the cutting action is actually very fast in this case this the that actually the very fast cutting also try to remove this kind of the defect. The extrude must have the sufficient cohesive strength and elasticity to prevent actually tearing operations. It must have the good amount of the elasticity, sufficient elasticity and the cohesive strength enough just to avoid formation of the tearing uh, during the processing of the this uh, ceramic component. So, these are the different types of the extrusion defects or maybe I can say the uh, different problems associated with the extrusion for the uh, ceramic component. Now, I will try to discuss about the injection molding. So, injection molding we understand that it is a basically variety of the polymer products are produced with a very high productivity using the injection molding operations. Even this is mainly used for the thermoplastic materials for example, polyethylene, polyesterine and the 
polypropylene this type of the materials can be uh, processed using the injection molding operations. So, process sequence is that first pre-mixing the polymer with the pigments and the uh, pacifier. So, we can mix the polymers to with some pigments to impart certain properties of the polymer components. So, we, we use some additives also along with the polymer. Then feeding and compressing the material using the plunger or we can use uh, some kind of the screw uh, just to uh, compressing the material. So, now in this case we try to heat the this heat this one to form a consolidated viscous material. So, otherwise if the some amount of the viscosity you need to bring in this particular component such that it will try to flow when we, we apply the, the pressure. So, then once it is that create some viscous material then it is a forcing of the viscous material into the through a cavity of the cold mold. So, through a cavity it pass through and it is exposed to the cold mold here the injection happens. So, in this case the cooling which tends in the thermoplastic polymer once it is done injected is done then take the shape uh, as per the die shape then after that if you follow the cooling operation it uh, basically strengthen the thermoplastic polymer then after that separating of the component solidified component from the mold wall. So, these are the basic process steps associated with the injection molding operations. But powder injection molding is basically used in this case is the industrial production of the small ceramic parts. In that cases we can use the even for the ceramic component we can use the this in uh, injection molding also. The creating parts of the very complex shapes can also be created using the injection molding operations and then even it is possible to achieve very high dimensional accuracy using the injection molding uh, process. So, here you can see the what are the steps in injection molding process. So, components is the see the ceramic powder, polymer binder, secondary binder, plasticizer and the lubricant these are the typical components associated with the, the injection molding operation. So, we see we mix it powder, binder, solvent, lubricant all we can mix it uh, here and then after that we can put it uh, granulation which this one after mixing we can put this mixture and uh, here we put it in the, the hopper through which it is screwing the material as well as the some create the pressure such it will have to inject in the mold cavity. One it is injecting in the mold cavity take the shape of the mold cavity which is the debonding the separated from the mold wall and then after that we directly perform for the sintering operations to consolidate uh, this basically the component. Uh, um, uh, uh, following the process of the injection molding operation. So, mixing conduct in absence of the air just to try to avoid the some oxidation and degradation of the organic components usually happen. So, that is we try to avoid the oxidation when you try to move the mixing it and uh, try to put in absence of the iron. Temperature below the degradation point of the organic uh, components we put the the this because organic uh, component they are having very low temperature that will start the degradation of the component polymeric material. So, temperature should be lower than that, but in that cases the highest melting organic components first mixed first then temperature should be set adjusted as per the just below below the this melting point of this particular uh, highest melting point organic components. And then after then gradually you can lower the temperature and keep on adding the different components. Uh, within the mixture. Now, apparent viscosity can reach up to 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 6 uh, milli Pascal second. This is the unit of the viscosity and this amount of the viscosity can achieve uh, using uh, in specific to associated to the injection molding operation. So, here material cut to the finer size screening and feed into the uh, extruder, pelleting extruder, uh, this all steps material we can cut in the very finer size and then cooled extruded cut from the uh, pelleted feed material uh, we can uh, cool part we can take it from pelleted material and of course air bubbles in the pellets must be avoided in this particular uh, case the when we try to do the mixing operation of the this is the uh, ceramic uh, materials along with the different binder or additive agents. Now, Injection molding binder selection and additives. What kind of the additives on the binder can be selected in case of the injection molding operation? So, common additive is that the backbone binder, polyethylene, polypropylene, and the polyesterine, these are the common binding elements. Wax can be used the surface as a liquid at the molding temperature and binder when acts during the cooling phase. 
So wax can be used, vegetable or mineral oil can be used, as, it can be used act as a solvent or plasticizer. Other minor additives, for example, low vapor pressure plasticizers can be used, epoxy resins, phenol, uh, formaldehyde and the uh, other this uh, phenol uh, for food oil uh, can be used for the thermo setting system. So, in that cases we see that different kind of the additives can be used depending upon the whether it is thermoplastic polymer or the thermo setting polymers we are handling based on that we can choose the different additives. Now, low pressure injection molding in this case wax or aqueous system wax can be molded at the low temperature and pressure on the say the aqueous can be water soluble binders that that gel on heating becomes gel on heating or freeze and can also be sublimate. So, in this case we use the low pressure injection molding uh, in case of the wax for the aqueous system usually for the uh, injection more uh, pressure should be low in this case. So, here you get some understanding that what are the different binding elements you can utilize for the different types of the uh, this uh, material. So, wax, resin, epoxy, aqueous. So, binder 1 and binder 2 can be utilized, what can be the solvent can be used, what can be the lubricant can be used. So, all you can get the information related to the injection molding operation. Now, injection molding machine if you look into this a plunger or the screw is basically used we can see the, the, the hopper is there, the plunger is, screw is used here and then uh, this uh, the using the ramp pressure is the displacement and we can use the uh, or we can use the plunger also both options can be used and then this part is basically injected through the the die here and the it is injected from here and it is entered through the die and it, this die actually take the uh, final shape. So, here plunger pressure can be material cross section to provide more uniform and plunger here we are using the plunger, plunger can be 3 to 100 mega Pascal can be created, material can be heated around 125 to 160 degree centigrade and it is passes through the nozzle and the, uh, the it can use the nozzle and then through the sprue it enters to the mold cavity. So, here you can see depending upon the the this size of the cavity of the mold we can use the very complex structure using the injection molding operation. Now, here injection molding machines we can see what way the this mold can be filled. The small stream of the heated metal is fits into the mold cavity you can see the small strip use this way you can be filled the different pattern actually mode of the filling different pattern can be generated using the weather in injection molding machines. So, here temperature control along the flow path into the mold cavity must be controlled carefully through the flow path uh, before uh, up to the reaching to the mold cavity and the pattern of the mold flow cavity can have many form and filling should be occurs at the uniform as uniform as possible so that you will get the uh, good um, properties of the component. We use the lubricant also because it reduces the flow and the mold filling in this case uh, as well as the aids in the separation of the uh, separation from the mold. So, that you say we can use the lubricant. Then tooling, hardened tool steel, stainless steel, nitrated surface or uh, all different types of the tools can be used uh, because this is having very good wear resistance properties and that use in case of the injection molding. So, either screw or the plunging motion can be utilized uh, to perform to displace the, the raw materials uh, into the uh, into the mold cavity. So, in this case mold actually start with the rapid rise in the pressure just produce the forward motion of the plunger or the screw. In this case pressure is held until the complete fill the material in the uh, till the material frees we can keep on applying the pressure in this particular case. So, pressure is held until the, the mold is filled and the this uh, fill and the metal in the uh, fridge. The, so, therefore, the time of the molding cycle can be um, can be less than uh, 2 millimeter. These are the typical time for the uh, mold filling in case of the injection molding process. But even injection molding also associated with the some kind of the defects in injection molding you see in the here we see the one is the mixing the stage of the origin is the one is the mixing. Mixing means it can create the agglomerate. So, that means we say the cluster of uh, the particles can be there that can be treated as a this cannot bring the uniform structure. So, it can be treated as a defect. Segregated binder and the wear product contamination can also be there also this can be this mix with the uh, component. So, that will this can be treated as a different kind of the defects under the category of the mixing. 
then during the molding also the defect can also forms so for example the weld along the weld line short sweats voids from the water absorbed on the materials voids due to the different shrinkage and this usually happens in the molding stage cracks can be due to the different shrinkage even mold ejection shrinkage all can be act as a the creation of the associated the defects poor skin blister on the surface mold surface wear contamination so all are the defects associated with the molding operation of the injection molding process then binder removal also during the binder in the stage of the binder removal it can create the different types of the defects for example relaxation deformation on relaxation of the residual stress when there is a relaxation during the binding stage residual stress of the relaxation that will create some amount of the deformation so that can be treated as a defect create can create the cracks bloating the cracks due to the decomposition of the binders they can create the cracks also cracks from the differential binder removal so different types of the binder is there so it always associated to the different uh, create the different uh, sink different expansion contracts and that will create some kind of the crack also even uh, delamination of the surface skin binder as residue contamination uh, uh, all this kind of the uh, defects are associated with the during the binding removal process associated with the injection molding so here you can see that we will try to express the basically extrusion process and uh, injection molding which is pertinent to the uh, the ceramic material which we consider as a it's a kind of non-conventional uh, processing in the sense either uh, in the um, from the perspective of the material or perspective of the manufacturing techniques but of course here we will try to discuss the perspective of the materials which is this uh, although injection and the uh, injection molding and the extrusion process is well known process and the in metallic material it is well established but I, tried, I have tried to explain here this is an unconventional process from the perspective of the ceramic material and we can easily distinguish how this processes and their defects formation is completely different uh, uh, when you are handling the metallic component. So that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.